see if I can find the center of my screen. I, I'm sorry for the delay. I had to uh, rearrange my my cameras, so this is a if it looks like a slightly uh, different angle, maybe a slightly different angle. So let's let's actually start. Allow your feet to touch. Good afternoon. Welcome. And uh, let's do a little bit of a little bit of qigong breathing to start. So make your feet nice and parallel, and then as if you're lifting the air, as if you're lifting the qi, the energy, and pressing all the way up, expanding, and then reaching out to the side, make it a stretch. So go at your own pace, but imagine fueling up before you go on a trip. There's another visualization you can practice while you're working with this exercise, and that is imagine <clears throat> when a creature is born it has to expand out of uh, on an egg, out of some type of uh, placenta. If it's a mammal, bird, all vertebrates, fish expanding outwards. So the same thing from your center. Imagine pushing downwards into the ground and, and expanding upwards. And then as you reach out to the sides, almost as if it's an egg shape. So relax your shoulders. Pressing all the way out. So full expansion in all directions. And at the base, just let everything relax. You can go on your own, practice on your own. You don't have to sink all the way down. You can just sit to here to relax. Activate your whole body from your toes all the way to your fingertips. There's only one piece. There's only one you. Two more from the base. Make the longest, most relaxed breathing of the week so far. And when you reach the end of the second one, bring your feet back together and then Line your body up vertically and then relax. Let's actually uh, do a little bit of a little bit of warming up before we, we practice. So start with your head top and just hold your shoulders in place and then pushing up through the back of the neck. I want you to turn as far as you can. Try to line up your nose with your shoulder, if you can. The whole time, pushing up through the back of the head, and then turning the other direction. Breathe deep. Grip the ground. Turn. And then come back to the center. And then the same thing, except this time we're going to look up. 
So pushing up through the back of the head top. And then the same thing when you reset, tuck your chin. And then when we go forward, the same, like you're extending the back of the head top. So for these, uh, for this stuff with the head and neck, right now what I want you to feel is if, how many here have ever uh, had a slinky or used a slinky, right? Which is a, a giant spring. And the, the spring sort of, well, if you put a little bit of power in it, will send energy to the other end. So I want you to imagine your neck as a slinky and that it's not just folding back this way, but instead we're going to arch it up and over. So extending. And then the same thing when we go forward. It's not just going to fold here. We want to push it. Feel the arch. And it's starting at the middle of your back, going all the way. And then the same thing when we go from uh, side to side turning, if this way. So there's like a, imagine the, the thinner the line of the axle, the more accurate it is. So remember to breathe, the same long breathing that we started with. <clears throat> and then try the other side. So make the, the axle, the, the, the line of rotation. Super accurate. And then come back to the center. We're going to do some, some shoulder rolls. So this, I don't care how fast you do them or how slowly you do them. I want you to, to make the, the size of the movement in your shoulders as large as possible to feel a stretch. So that means they need to be relaxed and then breathing deep. Make the movement exaggerated. So you're pulling the shoulders all the way back and then pulling them together in front. You don't have to change your, your structure. <clears throat> you can time it with the breathing, but you don't have to for these. Did we change directions? Do some the other way. And then to, to really make a stretch, try to pull one up and the other one is going down, forward and back, down and up, back and forward. You don't have to move the arms, you can just do the, the shoulders. You can use the arms to to visualize. And then we change directions on these. The same thing I want you to feel as if when one is going down, the other one is going up. The forward and back. Try to keep your spine in line in the same place. And then relax for a second. See if you can let your shoulders find the right spot. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> Let's do a little bit of turning around the waist. So locking the hips. By the way, this is this is uh, the kind of stuff if you have a, a, a beyond on that, that is cut for your shape, it will sit basically uh, in the palms. And we can do this kind of turning. And it's very effective. So even, uh, I know Mark has, has a, uh, a number of uh, staffs that may work for this process. You can use a longer one, right? The same techniques that work for the Beyond God also working for, for full-size staff. Uh, so here, the same concept. Shorter one, more difficult to, to apply, right? This, the, uh, the correct movement if you use something like this, and we turn from here, not as effective. So uh, we can use this to ensure that the the shoulders are correct. The same thing with the next one, with this kind of turning. You can practice controlling. 
So using your stomach, and then the same thing, pushing up through the back of the head, keep the chin tucked. And so for this one, if you come back to the center, relax for a second, imagine that you have a, some type of mechanism and it's gonna turn around the center like this and, and maybe it's a little bit uh, stiff. So when we, when we get this turning, <clears throat> we wanna to get to a point where there's a little bit of overlap. So imagine if I was gonna to turn to the side here and then instead of just stopping here, I allow the center axle to turn a little bit more, right? So <clears throat> the same thing, if you whether you use the stick, uh, if you if you're not using the stick, you can you can be touching the shoulder, something like this. And the idea is, so you reach the maximum, and then kind of like a like a rubber band, when you pull it, it reaches a certain point, and it can stretch just a little bit more. So yeah, you should feel this thing. So feel your knees, grip your toes. Push up through the back of your neck. Let your tailbone relax. So like you're allowing your spine to lengthen. You're pushing up through the head top, relaxing, releasing the tailbone and everything below. Keep your chin tucked. And when you reach the end, allow the weight and the momentum to give you a little bit of an extra stretch in your back your shoulders, your neck. So keep your focus on the center line. And then next, <clears throat> uh, take, take your stick and put it behind your tricep and then reaching back here, do a little bit of massage so running it along the back edge of that arm. Remember to breathe and then change. Do the other side. So reaching behind. And then we can do the, the yoga, the idea for a strap in yoga, which is to to connect the hands, to assist in stretching. So walk the hands towards each other. Breathe deep, pull your, uh, pull your shoulders and your elbows back. Push your head top up, relax your tailbone, and then change <clears throat> from the other side. The same, reaching through, walk the hands towards each other. And then for this one, maybe we can maybe we can get somewhere if the uh, if everything's closed here. But I want you to pull your elbows and your shoulders back and apart, like you're opening all this stuff. And then breathe to assist the stretch. Once you feel like you've walked the hands together, like pulling the hands uh, towards each other, then do the breathing to assist the stretch. The same way just a second ago, we used the, the rebound on the overlap to increase the stretch. And then relax, come back to the center. We're gonna do uh, this one. So pushing up to the corner, uh, this one, you can use any, if, if, by the way, if you have a full size piano, it, it will be awkward to hold it down here. So you hold it closer up this way, and then pushing up. If I'm facing due north, I'm actually turning, twisting my body, looking up to the corner, breathing deep, and then come back to the center, change. I'm facing north, my hand goes to the east, and then I'm gonna turn all the way past the south. Grip your feet, mind your knees, breathe deep, stretch out your arm, how many of you feel this? This is this is actually a really uh, fantastic stretch. If you get this correct, uh, this particular stretch, you should feel from from the 
pectoralis, the, the shoulders in the front, bicep, and this whole inside of the arm. You should be getting this kind of uh, stretch. <clears throat> How many feel it? Feels, you should feel the whole thing opening, right? Uh, if, you, if you got it, we don't have to, to do it again. Let's do uh, the next one. If you have your stick, uh, practice. Uh, there's a, I have a, a DVD somewhere from, from China. There's a whole minute, mini stick form. They use a, uh, something, it's, they say you can use a Tai Chi ruler, uh, but you can use something even smaller. And they have a whole stick form that's designed for hitting. But then they also are practicing things like carrying the stick in your elbow. And then being able to transfer the stick. I, I don't. I, I haven't done this. I haven't seen the DVD in, in a number of years. But under your your armpit and things like when you bend, if you're carrying it here, so you get used to uh, doing things in sort of a, a unique way. The same way, if you have your stick uh, bending forward, grip the ground, push your tailbone back and away, and then relax your spine. We're going to be here for a little bit, so check your breathing. Activate your feet. And see if you can become sensitive to the feeling of gravity stretching your back. stand all the way up and relax. By the way, if you have a feeling when you do this kind of exercise, or if you uh, have been sitting on the couch eating junk, watching the, the screen for too long, and you go to stand up and you feel like this, you have some kind of lightheaded. Uh, this, is, this is not a medical advice, but it's a different kind of idea. The idea is the chi is, is up here, and we want to actually lower it. So uh, thinking of this as like the energy in the body, like a container or a tube. If we go to stand up too quickly, you have a water bottle and you go and you sort of throw it forward a little bit, all the water goes towards the towards the other end. So the same thing happening here. So the same when we lift, if you feel lightheaded, you feel, oh I feel like I better have something to, to hold on to. This is a that's that's it's good to be aware of that, and uh, you can use something for balance. But try to activate the feet. Try to get the energy down to the bottom. So if when you're standing up and you feel this, it's okay to either sit back down or to, like, making the bottom half of the head, uh, bottom half of the body very heavy. Like you're rooting. Somebody's pushing you in, in push hands. And you want to maintain your roots, so you sink all the chi, you make roots going down into the ground past the floor line. Uh, this is a good way to drain that kind of top heavy chi. Let's do that one more time with that in mind. Activate your feet, make them parallel, look down, push and hold your stick with your waistline, grip your toes, relax your spine, and see if you can feel gravity stretching your back neck and head downwards. Imagine a string is connected to your tailbone and it's going to pull upwards towards the ceiling. Fully release your neck, fully release your head. And then when you're ready, grip, grip the ground with your feet. Pull your heels forward. You can unroll the spine, catch and hold your stick as you need. And then balance the energy if it feels like too much is going up. Allow some of it to go back down. Theoretically. Uh, next, we gotta we have to warm up the legs a little bit in this class because this this class is uh, the Biangon is a lot of just basically lunges. This smash is 
In, in the Chinese Kung Fu, you may hear of a one to refer to as Qi Ling Bu. And Qi Ling Bu, Qi Ling is like a mythical animal. It's something like a cross between, like, a, it's maybe considered like a griffin. It's like, I think it has a deer's, the body of a deer and the head of a dragon or a lion, something like this. And, and they may have wings. So Qi Ling Bu is basically a lunge, right? Gong Bu is a work step like this. And Qi Ling Bu is when you take that, keeping the hips level and just releasing the rear heel. So this is a lot of this kind of smash we end up in the, the Qi Ling. So let's warm up the... Uh, warm up the legs. Uh, let's start. Take take your stick, like your any way that you like to do it. You can hold it at one end and use the other end. You can hold it on either side. But imagine your leg is a tube of, of uh, toothpaste. You can imagine something better if you want. Like a icing comes in that same kind of tube, right? For for a cake or some kind of frosting if you like to bake. But either way, imagine that you're pushing all of the extra contents. If you're an artist, they have tubes of paint, right? You can imagine, uh, especially for if you get good, high-quality paints, you want to get the last bit. So imagine that you're pushing all of the energy, you're just working the top of the legs pushing downwards, you can do the inside, please be careful on the surface of the bone, Remember to breathe while you're doing that too. And for people playing along at home, watching YouTube videos later, everybody is, uh, must have enjoyed that quite a bit because you spent some time uh, working on yourself. That's good. <clears throat> okay, cool. Uh, what, let's, uh, we can actually do one more thing is just to get energy moving, whatever stick you're working with, just tap the bottom of your foot. You don't have to hit it very hard. You can just get it the right amount. Try to cover the whole surface and especially the inside arch, right? So where the, where the foot, the inside the arch of the foot. <clears throat> The kidney meridian comes up through the arch. Try to get your toes. Try to get the outside of the foot. Right? You can use two hands. Practice balancing. Grip your other foot. Try not to modify your structure. So keep the, the straight center line so that that's vertical. And then remember to do the other side as well.
right side, elbow, smash, smash, return, hit. There's two blocks, and then the end salute. So all of these movements we have done before, with the exception of the two blocks, it's just a matter of putting them together. So let's do the whole form, first and second section. When I reach the end of the first section, I'm gonna come back here to reset so that you can sort of follow up going in that direction. And then uh, we'll break down some movements at the end. Before we continue, anyone have questions, thoughts, comments, something you've been working on in the middle of the week? You saw the video and you wanna know how it works. Okay, cool. Let's begin. So from the salute, <clears throat> I have to sort of check my new, my new camera, camera setup. From ready, block, cast, waba, elbow, smash, cut up, spinning block, drill, high hit, ankle, Tip up, forward, turn, two, three, hold that thought for a second. And now if I'm facing due north here, this is at the side of my gate, waba, elbow, reach across, scoop, reach across, aiming north, smash, pop up, Hit back, reset, pop up, hit back, reset, iron fan one, iron fan two, left hook, right haymaker, into the elbow, and then we have smash left, smash right, Fan, just like the end of the first section, turn, two, ankle smash. Hold that thought for a second. <clears throat> just like the end of the first section. And now from here, after this hit, we're gonna step, we have a block. So this is a block on the left side. And then we have a block on the right side. We step forward. So that's considered the, the end of the form. This is only a 13 posture form, right? Uh, there's more than that, but I think of the unique ones, I think there's 13 of them. So let's work on, uh, I think we can work on the end of the second section. I think we may actually be able to, to finish the form uh, in this class. We'll go over it again, we'll have other classes to review. So. Uh, before we do that, everyone has an idea for these ones, pop up, hit, and then iron fan one, iron fan two. We looked at this, this sweeping punch to the corner, this other turning punch, and then the next one is, so these are, you can think of this for the stepping kind of like a zigzag, because it's going to go to one side, to the other side, and then we go ping pongs back and forth. So it's a couple of times. So if I go, if I'm facing in that direction, I'm going to go north. And I have iron fan one, iron fan two. I have my left hook, right a maker. And then I'm going to wobble and flip into my elbow on the right side. I'm going to turn it over and smash on the left side. I'm going to wobble and turn it over and smash on the right side. So you see there's this, this zigzag after the second iron fan, right? Iron fan one, iron fan two, left hook, right haymaker, elbow, smash, smash. So it just goes back and forth, right? Yeah, go ahead, question. Um, right, so when you do the right hook into the um, left, right, left hook into the right haymaker, are you going from yin-yang hands 
This one, uh, the, I feel like the hand trick for this one is the same as like Iron Fan, but instead the hands are split further apart. So this makes this this stick like a door, right? So when I'm doing the first one, I have an open step. If we take away the stick, this is almost like a like a left hand punch, right? That has this this kind of punch here, and this hand coming back. So this makes the stick like a door. And it's... Palm down on this one? What's that? Palm, palm up, palm down. down. Yeah, right? Okay. So, so that's this, this hit here. And then the next one is turning. So if you pull the left hand, the palm up, towards your dantian or hip here, and you bring this foot together and send your right side up, So then we end up with just the reverse. So it's almost this, just this, right? Okay. Which is but no hand foot. The, the hands stay up and down. You not between know. those two, right? Not between those two. So for the first one is here, and then the second one is here. They can we can waba. I, I don't know if it's if it's uh, certain that, that that it's a that it's a beyond gone principle to waba on every posture, but um, I know that. Like if we revisit the, one of the most basic exercises here, this one, right? Like the the uh, kind of like the nunchuck exercise. If we're doing this one, this particular form recommends a waba before you catch and throw. So there's a slide. So even here, slide catch throw, slide catch throw. So it's we're not just hook and then let it fly. There's a a sort of springier mechanism when we do this little bit of a slide. And then it also gets you used to, in almost every posture, uh, the hands can slide pretty easily. So when we do this first one, we can have a sliding if we need to. If I want to... Uh, by the way, there's another, there's another concept that doesn't translates, or at least it has a very kind of a humorous translation specifically for Beyond Gone. And maybe this is something from Guo, from his, his students, his lineage. But they refer to any time that your hands are on a part of the stick where it can get hit as the hot zone, right? So it's kind of a funny, kind of a funny term. But the idea is, if I'm hitting my opponent, right, and I want to use this kind of hit, I don't actually want to risk my equipment, right? I have a wooden stick. And the white wax wood is very flexible, right? We should be able to, to get some good flexibility out of it. And with that, we don't want to, why would I want to hit somebody else? Even if a, if a slight miss and I clip a piece of something, that's a risk to, this is, this is a un, un, a priceless equipment. Your hand cannot be replaced. So we use a stick to protect ourselves. It's self-defense. So you may wava to get your hand out of the hot zone. If I want to hit that target over there, right, it may feel like a Hollywood movie thing to really keep my hand close to there so that my the, the backing of the door gets to here. And you may use that for an attack if you're striking somebody's chest, you're probably, you know, there this this area here. But if you hit bone with your with your uh, Knuckles, this is thin skin on here, so we, we want to protect that equipment. So we can actually slide this down a little bit to take our, our hands out of the, the hot zone. This is the same thing with all of the attacks. So for the za, the same smash, I can keep my hand way up here. And by having this L bracket behind the smash, I'm creating, I'm, uh, creating a structure that allows me to transfer more of the weight down onto my opponent. But guess what? My fingers may be compromised. If they change, and now instead of hitting here, I hit here, I might smash my own pinky. We don't want to do that. That's uh, dangerous. So instead, we can slide. And still, even from here, we have that same structural circle. It's not as powerful 
if we do from here, right, it's not as like a tree stump. It doesn't hit quite as good, but the hands are safe. So to go back to the, the thing that we're working on and, and hopefully answer Charlotte's question is when we get to here, is there, do we slide? Can it slide? Yes. <clears throat> In the form, do you have to show it? No. There can be a wobble. And then the same uh, for the hand transfer. When we go the other way, this is almost like the thing where it goes into the elbow. We're turning the stick back and forth like this. And if you notice, that looks like the basis. But we're a, sort of applying a different end cap. It goes into the elbow. Or in this case, we have one hand rooted in the hip and it turns here. And in this next one, it's just turning. This turning power should feel pretty powerful. So if we hit one way and hit the other way, almost like a rebound, a ping pong, a ricochet, ping pong, it's here and then here. And that energy, once it hits here, goes back through the system. And the same thing, we can wab off. So if I need the door stopping power, the closer I leave my hand to the end of that swinging turning, the more it's like a, a solid door and less of a strike. Right? The door is pushing. This one, when I wab off, is striking. Okay, let's continue. So we have, and I'm, I'm calling these, by the way, because uh, I don't know the Chinese names for these. Uh, I'm calling these by their empty hand technique. This is like a left hook. And the next one is kind of like a right hook, but we have palm, uh, and this one, the palm is down, and this one, the palm is up. So maybe it's backwards. Maybe this is a haymaker, and this one is a hook. Uh, either way, it's like punching. So I'm punching to this side, and then I can step and then spin my body on that pivot when I land, and this other end goes forward. In the form, there's no set step. So you can, uh, if, if you want to use the lines as my gate, I have after my iron fan, uh, iron fan one, iron fan two, I'm using this line, gate, parallel to the gate, parallel to the gate, right? But you can make it, if you see the, the, uh, the video where I'm uh, performing in, at the competition in Los Angeles, my direction is changing, I'm over here and over there, because after my iron fan here, I can go to this direction. And then if I want to change and go over here, somehow I'm facing completely opposite direction. And the power is still there. So um, we're making it a lot simpler so that you can see what that form is. And then later you can expand. And once you see what the movements are, you can do the thing. Right? And so, by the way, this is also... Uh, because this is a Kung Fu class and not a Tai Chi class, I don't make such a requirement to keep the Tai Chi principles. Tai Chi is considered gentleman's boxing art, right? So we don't have to... This one, you can be... Right? If you want to change your, change your shape. But you should know what that is. And you should be able to practice with the Tai Chi principles in place with everything correct. Let's continue. Sweep, sweep left, sweep right. What's the next one? I'm taking my left hand and I'm throwing it all the way up, over, across, into my right elbow. So this is just like this thing in the first section, right? So if you hold the stick in front of you, at about the midpoint, right? Doesn't matter if you use the short stick, long stick. Either way, it's in front of you on your central line to the midpoint. And then you take your other hand and you're gonna, like you wanna scoop the stick and then pull it into your elbow. It should feel pretty powerful. It should feel like if you hit something with that, that it would, that it would hurt, right? If you hit some, somebody. So this is the same movement here. 
And then, uh, just like in the beginning of the second section, we have this thing where we have this U-shape scoop, and then we reach and smash. The same is true with this. Once it's in the elbow, we're going to reach across, we're going to change this palm, and then turn to smash. So if I have this circle, right, like, I'm, like I had my arms in a circle, like I'm holding this circular shape, I have my thumbs together, and then I slide it all the way to the end. So now this smash is me actually turning this circular shape, and I have a, a lever, a lever at the end of it, right? And this again, the wawa, is a power multiplier, is an amplifier. So when I step, this is a pretty good hit. And by the way, uh, to, not to confuse things any more than they already are, you can use the first half of this as a block without the wawa. So if I want to attack, I can wawa and smash here. But what if I don't wawa? I can just use the first half to attack my opponent as such with a, a giant blocking door. So the same thing for the smash, lava smash, or to dive in, right? And we'll get to that later. This is a sort of advanced application. You can start to, just like the Tai Chi, you can be applying power at any given point along the curve. All right, so we're in the elbow. The next one, we turn it over. Smash left. Smash right. Does everyone know how to transition between the two? Have a smooth. Let's uh, let's work on that. Let's actually practice that for a second. Hang on one second here. All right, cool. Uh, next. So from the smash on the left side, we're gonna wabba, and then the thumbs are already facing each other. So from here, I'm gonna after I do my wabba, I'm gonna pull it up, step forward. And then wabba again. And we're going to repeat a few times so you can see. Wabba. Step forward. Wabba. And now on the other side, slide. Step. Turn. Slide. Step and slide. Turn and slide. Step, turn. So this is turn, turn. Let's go slow. We'll go slow. We'll slow down a little bit, right? <clears throat> so from the one side, if I'm facing in this direction, I'll go at a little bit of an angle here so you can see. So from this smash, I'm going to wobble. And I can do that at the same time that I step. Pull this here. And now I'm going to throw this back section up and over, which has me wobble here. And now, hand and foot. Slide, hand and foot, slide. <clears throat> yes, question. Huh. Well, there is, because you're going from the smash on one side to a smash on the other, you're going to be able to keep your hand, your palms facing down the whole time. Yes. Um, yeah. So if I travel in that direction, Think of this a little bit like you're throwing the, the back of the stick all the time at your opponent, but you're throwing it instead of holding it like we would normally hold something, a rock, to throw it. We're going to hold it backwards so that the thumb is facing in, and we're going to throw that, but we're going to keep control of it with the fingers. So we throw this up and over, right? And then it lands naturally by the hip knee over here. And now the same, I grab this in my, my other hand, I want to throw it. It's a weird backwards throw, throw. So I'll just keep working, right? Throw, step, throw. <clears throat> this one is an exercise in, in a wow, right? Charlotte, that's it. But now make the make the hand movement more clear, right? So 
When you complete the loop, bring the hands together. And then wah And then when you complete the loop, bring the hands together. And then wah -wah. Together, wah -wah. Together, wah -wah. Right, that's the, that's the change. And then the next one, so after we do those two, we have, uh, let's see, left hook, right hook, elbow, smash, smash. Now from the smash on the left side is the same, right? Imagine I'm facing in this direction, I'm going towards the curtain, and I have an opponent that's either behind me or beside me, and they have a weapon, right? Their weapon is coming out this way, and it's aimed at my, aimed at my face, and I'm already, I've just done the smash over here. This is the same as the transition, right? When I turn, I hit, right? This kind of, <clears throat> so if I'm, if I'm closer to the camera, after I smash here, this wabba is this sweeping block. You can do it with a step, you don't have to. So we sweep, step, Exactly the same as the transition from one to two is the transition from, I don't know, is it two to three? It's the transition from two to the end. So, does anyone have questions on that? Because we can review it. <clears throat> okay, let's continue then. So, from the ankle smash, the next one is we step back and we have a block. So, uh, if you're using a stick with, with two ends, if you can distinguish between the yin and yang end of the stick, let's see, uh, iron fan one, iron fan two, I gotta find out which end of the stick is up, right, left, smash, smash. After the fan, we're holding the, the heavy end, the yang end, which is what I was thinking, right? So from the smash, we're gonna step back so the smash goes to the corner on the edge of my gate. I'm going to step back onto my right foot and use my stick to block. So if I'm facing that direction, I'm going to step back and use this to pull, pull in here. As if somebody is putting something towards my knee and I want to use the... This may be more easy to see with a sword. is from the second, oh, I'm sorry, from the elbow smash. If something is coming into my foot, my knee, this lower area, I want to turn the back of the sword and hook, hook to block, right? You can use the beyond on the same way. If there's a stick there, right, and I've just done the ankle smash, when I step back, I can have my right hand is thumb down, <clears throat> My left hand is thumbed down. When I turn my wrists, can you feel that, that angle, right? And that's going to be a circle. So after we, this is, so if you take this, it's, it's kind of almost like I'm making a big circle on my side here. Hit, hit. The idea is the opponent has something that's here on my side, and I want to be able to hit, to block it out of the way, right? I don't have a target low enough, but if I have something down there, right, after I've done the smash, I'm here, hit. And then the other side is the same. And these have a variance, but we'll get there. So, if I'm facing north, we have hit, and then stepping to the other side, the same, hit. Right? So, like there's something coming to one ankle, coming to the other ankle, we have to block, step and block. Let's go slower so you can follow, right? In fact, now we're going to add, now that we have this, we're going to add some wah 
So I'm a, if just take a nice parallel stance, parallel step, and hold your staff right, right hand up, uh, I'm sorry, right hand forward, left hand backwards, right up and down, <clears throat> like this. My right hand is palm down, left hand palm up, and, and keep it shoulder width wide. So we're blocking here, so from this center position, scooping down, and then we're going to bring the hands up together, and then turn the point of the staff down this way, and then come back. Wide grip, block left, bring the hands together, narrow grip, block right. Wide, block left, narrow, block right. Wide, block left, narrow, block right. So this is the most basic when you watch uh, any traditional martial artist from any style, when you watch uh, more primitive uh, creatures play with a staff, play with a stick. This is the most basic, is turning the stick here like this. But we're adding one thing. The same way that in our, in our body turning, when we have feet apart, feet and hands together, right, like this, we have the same. There's two blocks. They're very similar, but they have a slightly different technique. We're going to come back and talk about them more because we're running out of time. But the first block is the same. The hands are apart. And the same way that if we want to use a door stopping power here, right, instead of a hitting power, striking power by Waba this way, the same. With this block, if there's a heavy weapon or something heavy that we need to move, the closer we hold it to the hot zone, the more of a door or blocking type of panel action we have, right? But then on the other side, we change. So we have this. And on the other side, we slide the hands together for a fast block. This is if there's something coming in quickly, right? This, the hands being together can move very fast. So we have heavy block, fast block. And we don't want to lose the balance, so even though I'm moving around, don't shift the, the body out of the correct thing. And uh, and then so for, let's go slow, right? So I've done the uh, smash to the ankle. When I step back, I'm gonna wawa, walk left, step right, step to the left side, wawa. Sweep block to the right, and now when I step forward again, I'm going to wobble. There's one posture that we have before this, and so this last thing uh, before we close the form is after we have this hit, we have block, block, and then here looks like this. And what this is is after we block, block. Here, we're still ready. And even from the salute from here, right, we can go to the salute. But the salute can also be an attack. So this last thing is before we close the form, we make sure everything is ready and then closing, something like that. Questions, thoughts, comments? Cool. All right, let's do a little bit of a, a little bit of qigong to close, and uh, we'll come back. We'll review the whole thing, and we'll review parts towards the end. It's just like any form that you learn. Some of you have been practicing martial arts for several years now, and the stuff at the beginning is is uh, you know it really well because you practice it so much. But then by the time you reach the end, there's we've only practiced it. Five times, whereas the stuff in the beginning has been practiced 500 times. Take a nice, comfortable stance and then breathing as if you're inflating all the way and then let everything relax. So we're looking for two modes. One is expanded, so like you're breathing with your whole body, and the other one is relaxed, like you're. Skin and muscles, like everything can float 
on top of the hair, on top of the chi, relax your shoulders, your tailbone. Go at your own pace. Expand them all the way. Imagine you can gather the chi So like scooping up armfuls of something light and tasty, cotton candy. While we're breathing, we're going to do a few more. There's a saying, it says, the ancient Taoist masters breathe through their heels. So while we do these next few, imagine. This is a statement about using the whole body to breathe. Let your breathing your diaphragm, your dantian, sink all the way down to the feet. So it's full, deep breathing. Go at your own pace. And if you're filling up with energy, your arms should float. It should be easier for them to glide on their own. There's different ways to see when the body, when the battery is reaching capacity, when the body is relaxed and full. Do two more, whichever one you're on now, plus one last closing one. Take your time. We started just a little bit late. We can finish just a little bit late. If you gotta go, it's time now. Otherwise, longest, most relaxed breath stretch all the way. And then when you're done, bring your feet together and line yourself up vertically, relax your tailbone. And then just let your hands rest at your sides and feel as if your body is all connected, one piece. So from your toes to your fingertips, from your head top to your tailbone. And then leave your eyes partway open and then looking at your center, physically, mentally, Take a deep breath all the way into the center. Half smile at yourself is the minimum. And that's it. We'll continue the end of the form uh, next week. If you have questions, thoughts, comments, you know how to reach me. Yeah, or you can ask now. Okay, have a great night. Thanks, everybody.